Hey, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. I'm glad you're here. Um, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a lighthouse today. This is a lighthouse I actually framed many years ago, probably 15 years ago I framed this when I first started really, I guess, uh, going professional with my watercolor um, uh, journey, my art, my art journey. I, I decided to just go for it, put in tons of time. I wanted to become do my watercolor art professionally so I made that commitment and I just uh, went for it and uh, you know just really practiced uh, any free time I had after work or on the weekends I was painting drawing and painting constantly and uh, watching uh, DVDs from famous uh, artists and the whole gamut and uh, on YouTube I was watching tons of videos on YouTube so I did all these things um, but even, on, even at an early age, um, my mom and father were both artists. They, they studied art. They were enthusiasts, more or less. Like, they didn't do it professionally f so much, but they, they, were, they trained um, in New York City at their college where they attended. Um, and they, they studied art, so they were able to draw and paint anything, really, figures, portraits. They put a lot of time into it. Uh, and so I kind of picked up some of that when I was very young. And my mom kind of, when I was around eight or nine years old, uh, encouraged me to do watercolor painting. And she had a book, and she gave me the book. She gave me the brushes and the paints and everything and pencil and kind of showed me how to lay everything out, get everything all set. So basically what we did, we had an art book. I, I looked for it. I couldn't find it around the house uh, here. Um, so I guess it's maybe in boxes somewhere or whatever. No worries. Basically what we did was we just, we t you can do this with any photograph. Any um, painting you might have, a picture of a painting, online you might find something. You could even take this, this is some plastic. Uh, this is actually uh, acetate plastic, plastic. You can put this over a phone or an iPad or a, you can even put this over uh, a laptop screen, books, photographs, anything really. And what we did is we just, we put it over the book, the picture in the book of the painting. I think it was actually a painting. And then we just did like a... Um, we boxed it out into like three sections, almost like a tic-tac-toe, like this. And we used a ruler, so you would use a ruler to try to make every box pretty much somewhat close to the same, but it doesn't have to be. You can actually do it this way too. You don't even really have to measure anything. But you could use a ruler though to get the lines more you know, straight, but you could even do it just like this, a quick free hand uh, tic-tac-toe, basically. And then, and you can adjust it even too. You can make things a little, you can, um, let's say, make your boxes to land on specific areas to help you with your placement of your subject matter on your paper. So here we just looked at this and said, let's make our boxes like so. This horizontal line is going to go across the horizon line where the mountains are. These two vertical lines are going to have the lighthouse centered in, in there. And then here, this top line is just going to give us the top of the lighthouse, basically the light, the light area, where the light is, the actual physical uh, light in the lighthouse. So if we get that all set up and we have this plastic, or you can even just do light pencil lines, and that's what we'll do next, we'll, we'll transfer this onto a piece of paper, the same idea. But I just wanted you to see how we can do that. You can use a grid pattern of lines or even just parallel lines and a few... Basically, we do this all the time here. If you come to my channel on a consistent basis, you know we always put our hash marks around our tape as we're working so that we always get a close, you know, layout of how we want our painting to look. We, we just don't want to go at random and create a, a, a painting with no prior um, uh, layout so that we kind of we can get a much more better painting if we lay things out a little bit first. So we're going to do that here. So that's just one idea you can use with plastic. And again, this is the, um, the painting. We can zoom in a little bit. You can see it's, this was done on, I think, watercolor paper, a thin, smooth watercolor paper back in uh, 1970, I think it was five or 76. Might even be like, yeah, 74, 75 actually. And so you can kind of see Okay, so let's remove this here. We have our paper already set up. I have it taped. OK, 
Okay, we'll zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so this is our rectangle. We've taped it off with some really good masking tape. And uh, this happens to be a 3M construction uh, contractor's uh, masking tape. I found this just recently in a, in a hardware store and it works great. It's much like uh, your professional uh, drafting or professional artist tape doesn't really damage the paper at all, the watercolor paper. So we have rough paper, arches rough paper. And we're going to basically use that picture of the lighthouse. And if you can, you can somehow maybe uh, take a picture or a screen capture of that original painting I showed you. I'm going to work from that original painting for the most part. I might deviate a little bit, but it should be about the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is let's, we'll get our hash marks. So here we notice that the mountains and this, the, uh, the uh, shoreline is, pr is pretty, pretty low. It's about here in the painting. So it's, it's about a quarter of the way. So if we went with quarters here and said, all right, that's a, that's a half. That's a, that's halfway. That's hard to see. Uh, let me say this halfway. And this is one quarter, three quarter, and this is a uh, top. So if we have this pretty much, let me zoom out a little bit here. There we go. So we have a quarter, a half, three quarters, and then the top. So we're going to say that a quarter of the way up from the bottom of the page, we will have the shoreline. So that's pretty simple. And we could even just take our pencil and just super light, don't even press, hardly press at all, just go over super light and make a, a level line all the way across. That's it. That's our shoreline. Again, super light, barely touching the paper, just so you can kind of see it. Then we have approximately a half halfway is the, I would say a little bit above halfway is the top of the lighthouse. Uh, we have the freedom to change this composition if we want a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to leave it around that same, a little bit above halfway, maybe about three quarters of the way, a little bit less than three quarters. So if this is three quarters here. That's three quarters, a little less than three quarters will make the top of the lighthouse. So I'll just put a little mark there for the top of the lighthouse. And if we look, um, I think to make this a little more pleasing, the painting, we're not going to really want to have the, the lighthouse sitting exactly center. So if you can imagine, if you have something right exactly in the center of your paper, that won't look as interesting as if we just move it over a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. So if we move it over just a little bit to the left, that'll look more interesting. So we're going to do that. So we're going to say our lighthouse is about here. So if we just, and we can all always, we can use a quick ruler if we want. So if we go across here and we say, all right, this paper is nine inches wide. So four and a half inches is the center mark. So we could say here's the center, four and a half. That's our center line. And then we could say, let's make our lighthouse just a little bit to the left of that center. So let's make it like, make it like four, four inches. So a little bit to the left of center. And that'll be our uh, lighthouse. Okay, so we have our, our hash marks and then we could even just lighthouse here. 
So I just made almost like a straight mark like that. And that's really all we need here. Um, the rest is just we're going to use our creative abilities and just kind of scale things a little bit and realize we can't keep doing this. You know, all the, we can't always continue to make hash marks, you know, on and on and on and on. But if we do get these few few marks here on our paper, the shoreline, the uh, lighthouse where the lighthouse is going to sit here. Um, you know, we have, a, you know, the lighthouse is going to be here, so we can use a tube of paint just to pretend that's about the, and that's about w the size of the lighthouse too, actually. So we could even go around this piece of the tube of paint. We could go around this tube of paint here and just super light sketch. Not even, just barely touching the paper, just so we know, all right, that's the, that's the lighthouse. That's where the lighthouse is going to go. And the top is going to be here. We measured about where we're going to have the top of the lighthouse like that and then we can start our sketch so we did a lot of layout here we did we planned everything out let's let's uh, take a quick break I'm gonna take a five or ten minute break and then I'll come right back and we'll do this sketch we'll do a simple sketch of this and then we'll start painting we'll have a lot of fun this is real simple you'll get this real easy okay Okay, we took a quick break. Breaks are great. Breaks are excellent. Do it five, ten minutes, and then you come right back and you're uh, back and focused and ready to um, uh, continue on. So if you're more of an advanced student, I would say please feel free. Add some, add some curves to some of your lines, some perspective, a little more perspective. This I'm going to try to create just in a more simple format. But again, if you're more of an advanced student, you know, add those curves to some of the lines that we're going to do. Um, but here I'm just going to try to do a real simple rendition of a, a lighthouse and not get so bogged down with all the exact, you know, perspective and curves and, you know, all the things that might be a little more challenging for someone that's new. So this is going to, if you're, Newer, you'll have fun with this. If you're an expert or, you know, if you've been painting quite a while, you, you can just have fun with it. Add some more of your, you know, techniques and style and uh, expertise to, to this to this painting itself and drawing. So for drawing, I'm going to say this will be the top of the lighthouse and then we're just going to go with a triangle at the top of the lighthouse and then a square. And I might just erase just a few of the lines that I did prior to that. Okay, and then that's, so that's a triangle, a square, and then another, and then I divide, divide my square in half. Then I'm going to go with a, another line across a little bit larger than the top. And that's the uh, concrete section on the lighthouse here. And then I notice that it goes out again. It's, it steps out a little more, just a little bit though, not too much. It, it goes out a little more, maybe about, maybe about half of this, it goes out half of that beyond. So if you can imagine, you just double that, you double that line once you make your your rectangle here. So it's like a, a triangle, a square. We divide the square in half. Then here we're going to go with a rectangle, like the piece of paper here. It's more of a rectangle, not really so much a square. And it's, you know, wider than the top here, this top square. And then if you divide this in half, that's about the amount that this goes out to each side and then that's the base and I just go in a little bit there's a little bit of a, a, a like a railing around the uh, the lighthouse so I just I take that line and I just go in a little bit in a little bit and then we just go down lightly and 
it tapers out a little bit you can see it's not it's not a complete perfectly uh, round cylinder it's a cylinder shape like a you know it kind of looks you know it looks like a cylinder but it's got a wider base to it and then here we have the other larger um, base of the lighthouse here and it goes across wider over here and it goes down like that so that's basically a simple uh, drawing of the lighthouse and again, we made it. We made it pretty easy. Here's a. Uh, that's a chimney, I believe, for the inside of the lighthouse. There's a chimney. There might, there's probably a fireplace inside the lighthouse at the base. That warms the inside for the uh, caretakers. And then we have um, an antenna on top. And later we're going to do the railings around it. We won't worry about that right now. We'll let the details go, go to the end of the painting. When we start painting, we'll put the details in later after we're finishing up. We always want to get the, the basic shapes and, and block in the basic uh, drawing of this lighthouse. So then here, there's a little bit of a, another building over here. So we just make another rectangle over here. And it looks like it has some roof roof shapes on it, like so. Doesn't have to be fancy. We just leave it a basically a rectangle with a, a little roof shape on there. And then we have a flagpole over here. And that's about and I just put a little squiggly line on there for our, the flag. We'll put, put the flag on later. That's more of a detail. We really don't have to concern ourselves now too much. Just a little bit of a squiggly line there to denote there's going to be an American flag here. And we're just going to go over here. And now we have some rocks and things. So let's make some rocks. And that's pretty good. So we put a little bit of rocks here going down, sloping down, and then we still leave a little bit of water over here. Now, since we are drawing this, we can change our drawing if we need to. So always remember you always can adjust adjust your drawings and your paintings the way you want to. You're the artist. Here I'm just going to go down, more rocks. Kind of simple, nothing, you know, just some bumpy, bumpy lines. And then here's the shoreline in front, in front of the um, lighthouse. And there's some more bumpy rocks, bumpy, just some bumpy lines over here, you know. Rocks are more, again, you're just thinking of shapes. We're just thinking of shapes and we, we know that uh, you know, rocks are going to be bumpy like that. Rock shapes are bumpy. Sometimes they're sharp shapes too, like with angles. So rocks can be angular as well as round shapes. So you can do a combination of round and angles. And you can do most of that when you're painting, so you don't have to worry too much. You can do most of your creative rocks and things when you're painting. You don't have to worry like as your pencil drawing. Your pencil drawing is just getting down the basic ideas of what we're going to paint. Now we have our shoreline in here, our foreground or middle middle distance foreground in front in front of the lighthouse. We have our lighthouse here. We have the base, the concrete base of the lighthouse. We'll do the details later with the um, roof. There's a little roof area here. We could put it in now. So there's a roof area here. At 
the base of the lighthouse. There's a, there's a large door here at the base of the lighthouse. There's a window here, small, very small window there, and there's another small window up here in the lighthouse. Other than that, I think we can get the rest while we're painting. And then here, the distant shoreline is going to be somewhere around here. So we are going to change our shoreline a little bit. Not a lot. And then there's also a ship over here in the distance. Let's do that. So there's a, this might be a tugboat or might be a sailing boat. And that's the water. And if you want, you can erase that line there. The first one we did, if it makes it uh, easier to remember. Same over here. This water is going to be a little higher over here. So that'll be the water over here. So you can see the water line is over here. You can always use a ruler if you want to get it, you know, get it pretty exact. You can take a ruler and say the water line over here is, is here. And it's pretty close. So it's here and it's here. So we move the water line up just a little bit, the shoreline, the dist distant shoreline. And then now the distant shoreline, we're just going to make some soft rolling hills. That's going to be very, very light, misty kind of hills. And we could just... Just make them rolling, soft rolling hills in the back. That's all we have to do there just to give us some ideas as we paint. Okay, and there is a um, an interesting area over here. It looks like a, like a small, like a crane. They might have a, uh, a small crane over here on this building for lifting things, boats. It goes across here. And that's about it. Okay, we're in great shape. We got our drawing in. We, we basically went over the simple idea of we got our shoreline, our shoreline at a quarter of the height of the picture, about here, one quarter of the way up, our shoreline, three quarters of the way up on the paper, top of our lighthouse. That's it. We, we took our center line of the page and we made our lighthouse just a little bit to the left of that center line, just that tiny bit. If we move it over just a little bit, it looks a little better. If we put it right in the center, it might not look as good. But you can try that out. You can try it both ways, paint it both ways, and you know you decide what you like better. Um, so we're really all set now. We're ready to paint. Um, and we'll have some fun. We'll use some really interesting colors. So let's come. I'm gonna take a break, five, ten minutes, and we'll come right back and we'll we'll start the painting. And I'll right before we start to paint, I'll just I'll erase a few lines on here just so for fun. Okay, perfect. Oh, all right, we took a break, a quick break, just to get ourselves uh, rested a little bit here, five, ten minutes. We're, we're going to come back, we're going to start painting. Um, so I I have my all my paint colors here and, and my palette, my paints. Um, you can always uh, check out um, I forgot to mention, if you're new here, uh, please, you know, consider subscribing. I know all my subscribers, um, my friends that are come here all the time on a regular basis uh, for the last number of years, uh, you, you're already subscribed and you probably have uh, hit the no notification bell. Um, this is um, uh, just a matter of uh, if you want, every week we do a video. So every weekend we, we get together, we, we create a, a full painting. 
And this is my site, of course, uh, Chris Petri on YouTube. And if you click the um, subscribe button and uh, the notification bell as well, you'll, you'll be notified each time we have a new video. And also, too, I wanted to mention I have another secondary site I just created um, a couple months ago. It's uh, Watercolor in 5. Basically what that is is just a, a simple 10 or 15 minute video. I say watercolor in five, five minutes, but it always runs over to five or 10 minutes or so. But basically it's covering more fundamental things, some interesting paintings once in a while, some, some uh, videos on palettes, palette colors that I use. So that's a great, if you want to learn about my palette and my colors, you can go to watercolor in five. And on YouTube, you just type in watercolor and five all in capitals and you'll see my videos there. You can uh, click on that. And um, if you subscribe to that as well, you'll have um, notifications. If you click the notification bell and you'll just see that I uh, created a whole different style um, format of videos. And it's not so much like here on this regular channel that everyone's, you know, on, on my regular channel here, Chris Petri. You notice we're doing full videos. The other channel is just a little different. Not uh, the same format all the time and it covers interesting uh, other things we, we, we uh, learn about in watercolor. So good to keep informed on all the things uh, going on with watercolors. Let's, let's get started here. We're gonna do, um, we'll start out with our watercolor lighthouse here. Let's do some this is uh olive green there might be some sap green mixed in there too i might have added in some olive green and sap green it kind of got mixed together but sap green is probably good and you can add in a little bit of um raw sienna raw umber what we're looking for here is like an olive green i would add a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to that maybe some burnt umber so I like to just mix until I kind of find that interesting color that looks pretty close to what we're looking for in the painting. And that, that looks about good. And so we'll just... I'm going to leave a little white paper for the windows on both, both windows here. And you take your time. Now as I go in with this, I will make a little bit of cerulean blue. Let me add in a little bit of charge in some color, some other colors. We don't want to keep it too boring and bland. Let's, let's take some more of that burnt sienna. And then I'm going to go with a little darker here. It's a little darker underneath this roof area. There's a roof over this bottom section. So I'm going to make it a little darker. Burnt umber and French ultramarine blue mixed in with some of that green, the uh, sap green. And the sap green also has some yellow ochre mixed in there too. And we'll make that, it's just a little darker under there. So we want to just remember, we want to go a little darker under there like that. And since we know this is going to dry lighter as watercolor artists, we always know our paints are always draw, draw, uh, drying lighter. So if you put it on pretty dark, it's going to lighten up a lot. So you always have to remember that. So don't be afraid to go dark when you're, when you're painting here. So you can see that I went pretty dark here. It's going to lighten up a lot. And then let's take just a little bit of that and start working that green down into the, the base here. Just so it ties together. It'll look like it ties together quite nicely. And we're going to take some burnt sienna up here. So now you're going to see I'm making... A, this is basically the primary color of the lighthouse first. Now... We're going to start a little bit of cadmium orange, burnt sienna, a little bit of cad red. 
and we mix them. We mix kind of keep everything separate if you can, just a little bit. Um, some burnt umber, cerulean blue. So if you keep them all separate like that, then you can kind of just pick up a little bit of each, and then you get a nice mix of colors as you go in. And this is no worries here. We can. These rocks are darker over here, so you can work your. This is a lighter tonal value, the orange. And then you can charge in some interesting bits of color. A little cerulean blue, a little bit of that green. And then the key here is we're going to keep repeating the colors. We don't want to um, we don't want to change the colors too much. And we could just blend some of that in this way over here and over here. We're going to come back and work on these. Just go up here and do the top section of the lighthouse. Also, I want to again. We really important to leave those two bits of white paper on your lighthouse for the windows, and if you find your paint is, is flooding out too much when you're doing your lighthouse and so forth. It's just a matter of once you rinse off your brush, you tap off a little bit of water on a tissue maybe to get less water in your brush. And then you go straight into your soft moist paints. You have to have soft moist paints for this. Okay. And there's some more darker darks here. This is, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to let all of this dry. The, um, this would be the cement and concrete walls of the lighthouse that we painted first, the green, as you remember we saw in the, in the, in the painting. can just look at the painting again. So you can see we're pretty much sticking to the game plan. That olive green cement and concrete lighthouse, the main structure, will put all the railings and all those fine black dark lines in last after everything dries 100%, so you don't want to worry about those. So we'll keep working just blocking in the main uh, large shapes of this of this painting and we'll, we'll continue to do that so you can just kind of see we're working from this And pretty soon we're going to take a break. Maybe we'll do a little more of the stonework over here um, we'll, Again, let's use repeating colors. So we're doing our green sap green burnt umber Burn Sienna. We're going to try to use those same colors. A little bit of uh, a little bit of darker French ultramarine blue over here, and we'll keep the idea of mixing and sort of separating things a little bit. And then I rinse off the brush, tap off some of the water. And we'll just start working in some uh, colors here. This is going to be darker. So we'll... Another great thing with watercolor to remember with the fun of watercolor is if you know there's a darker color in your painting, that means that if you're doing a lighter wash, you can go over that, that area 
a little bit, you know. It, I'm not saying that's always the case, but you don't have to worry so much if you're painting and and you know there's going to be a darker color. You can just uh, So here I'm doing some darker darks. And that's good to mix in those other colors that we used over here. Again, the more if, if you can repeat your colors as you're working through your painting, it's going to look pl more pleasing, more... Everything is going to sort of tie together and look like, uh, you know, it's going to have a harmony to it, a um, tying together of, of the colors, which really is pleasant. Sometimes if we use different colors, it looks like it's sort of abrupt and, and it's kind of unpleasant. So if we can kind of mix those colors, we're going to go over these sections here where the rocks are with some darker darks. So we're just getting in that first base, lighter uh, glazing if you want to. We can call it a light glazing. And then I'm going to splash a little bit. And if the splash doesn't come out perfect, you can lift it up quick with a tissue. And we are now going to take a break. Let's take another break. We got a lot accomplished here. We've got pretty much the large mass of color for the lighthouse, the concrete structure of the lighthouse, and the base of the lighthouse, the concrete base of the lighthouse, as well as all the heavy uh, rocks along this base of the lighthouse here in these rock formations that make up the um, land mass that's underneath the lighthouse and around the lighthouse. So once we have this section here all completed, we're pretty much really in gray shape. We'll do some darker darks for our rocks around the base of this. And then we'll just start getting in our uh, distant mountains and our sky washes and things. But other than that, we're really in great shape right now. So we're almost there. We're probably three quarters of the way finished. Well, probably halfway finished, but this was the most important part here, just getting this real heavy mass uh, completed in this uh, painting. And now we're going to do more of the kind of uh, supporting parts of the painting that are going to kind of tie everything all together and make it look uh, very beautiful and pleasant. So we'll be right back. We'll take just about five or ten minutes or so, or even I'm going to go have some dinner maybe and I'll come back in an hour. Okay, we just got back here. We took a nice break. I took about a half an hour. Uh, I just uh, cleaned up my uh, palette a little bit just to start off with some more freeing, uh, fresh clean colors here. And um, I think what we'll do next is we'll just do some of the shoreline on either side here of the uh, lighthouse and, and the uh, lighthouse foundation and uh, cropping of land here. So um, again, we're doing more of our uh, medium tonal values, dark, dark, you know, dark to medium tonal values here. And then... Um, We'll eventually uh, do our dark, dark accents, which we'll do on the rocks and around the lighthouse. So we're sort of, um, we're not using an exact science here. We're sort of just, we're going in and um, working the uh, painting at one time a la prima. Now with the distant colors, The distant colors are going to be cooler, so now making a cooler green, I added some of that French ultramarine blue and cerulean blue to my green, and that's going to make it a, a cooler, cooler green. 
This is more of a warmer green here with more gold, like yellow ochre. This is more of a cooler green, more blue in there. And we'll, we'll do our distant shoreline here. And we just remember to make it a rolling hills here, and it's going to be around I'm going over the top of this distant ship over here so that that tugboat or, or uh, freighter ship over here is I outline the ship. You can see I kind of outline the ship the cabin areas and there's a little uh, smokestack on there we can we can leave that go you could we could paint through that too I don't think that would be a problem we could paint right through the smokestack and over here we're gonna do some of that cool green it's like that cooler green color it's not that warm green this is more of a warm green up here so we did add some French ultramarine blue to this green along the and then we can even I take my brush, I rinse it off, I dry off some of the water, and then maybe I just maybe infuse the top of that, dry off some of the water, maybe just to make that a soft looking, the top of the mountain there in the distance is a little bit, is, is a softer transition, not a hard super hard edge there. Then I can go in and get some more blue and um, purple. And we'll, we'll do the we'll do a purplish green purple. And that'll be the other hill here in the distance. I can leave some highlights there. And then what I'll do is I'll take some of that purple and actually add it in, in a few places here. That's going to make the painting look more harmonized together. If I was just to take that purple and put it in the mountain, distant mountains over here, without adding it to the other sections, just a little bit here. You can see I'm just sort of putting it on a little bit here and there. It's going to look much better. And then some more purple and then a little bit of lizard and crimson. So add a little bit of that touch of that lizard and crimson. That'll be the same thing too. Um, and then I just soften that edge too as well. And I think that's pretty good. I just take a mixture of the two greens and maybe just and then more purple. Just a super light wash with a damp brush just to sort of soften out that purple, distant purple color. That should be pretty good. And 
and we can also add in some some uh, yellow ochre just a touch here and there in this in the distant colors over here just to give it some interesting color variation if we were just to kind of leave it the way it was it doesn't look as good I think that looks a little better with some lizard and crimson there And then the rest will will blend the sky in to this distant hill here. So once we get once we get to the point where we're going to do our sky wash, we'll blend that into these distant hills. We might wet this edge a little bit here along here once we're in the sky wash. We're going to reflect down into the water too. So whatever colors we're going to use for the sky. We're just going to take that color and blend it down into the water here as well. And we'll leave the water sort of light. Okay, so we're really... Coming along nicely here. I'm going to use a larger brush maybe here for the sky wash. So I think I'm going to go with... This has been an 8 that we're using, an 8 or a 6 Raphael. So a Raphael number 6 round brush, Kolinsky Sable. Now we're going to move up a little bit larger brush. Maybe we'll use the um, Clint, uh, Raphael number 10 for the sky wash. And I'll just empty my water quick. So I just like to get fresh water. Especially if we're going to work with the sky colors and water colors, we definitely want to change our water out. To fresh clean water again otherwise that muddy water will um, not give us the most best uh, results with our sky and our water so you can see I changed out my water and um, put fresh clean water in there and uh, we'll do that let's do the sky wash in the water now um, for that I'm going to um, I'll wet that edge again along the top of the mountain so that that blends in a little better when we do our sky wash when we meet up with the mountains here with our sky color so I just wet that edge a little bit there and you can see it sort of got misty already at the tops here that's fine and then for the sky wash let's go for um, a mixture of uh, cerulean blue French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. Um, we're going to use a little bit of um, uh, yellow ochre for the maybe toward the uh, horizon line where that meets up with the uh, mountains with a little bit of orange. And um, a little bit of lizard and crimson. Make a purplish color. And maybe a little bit of that green too. So it's just a feel. Mostly it's a, it's really a lizard, um, cerulean blue. A little bit of sap green, just to give a little bit of that greenish color to match up with everything else. And we'll have some orange and um, a little bit of cadmium orange up here with. Um, yellow ochre for the uh, along the mountains and I just scrub it in I try to once I start it I'll change it around a little bit a little bit more French ultramarine blue there the skies are fun or challenging I'd keep it light though, I wouldn't go too dark, and it'll lighten up a lot too, don't forget. Everything's going to lighten up a lot. And I just scrub it in, and I just try to make ang angle lines 
toward the center of the painting. And scrub around. And then as we get closer to the four to the uh, to the mountains, then I pick up some of that orange color. I leave a little bit of uh, clouds. If it looks too, too bright, a little bit of burnt umber mixed in with that uh, cerulean blue. And again, this is just the fun part. You, you have to work, work at it a little bit here and there, try out different things. But if we darken it up a little bit here and there with some of the, let's say a little bit of a uh, muddier color. It looks a little better. But not too much. That looks good and that's going to lighten up a lot too. Don't forget as we put on watercolor it always gets lighter. So if it looks a little dark it's not going to be a problem and I can even go in quickly though. This We have to do this fast. The um, If we want to add a little bit of darker tone there, tonal value. It has to be done really quick though while this is the first five minutes or first three or four minutes. We can't go back and do this like five minutes later. It won't, it'll make, um, it'll make funny looking marks that will not look great. So let's You can always take a, also take a, a tissue if you think. It might look a little interesting. We could blot up a little bit of uh, paint along the, the base here. Maybe a couple spots. Looks good. And then we take that same wash. We'll just make it lighter though. And maybe we'll just give it the feel of water. Then we can go in quickly and we will get some green burnt umber, burnt sienna. We're going to make some of the, um, we're going to put some, just some uh, reflections there. can make that a little darker in a few spots. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, green, burnt uh, French ultramarine blue, make a little darker.
Okay, that looks good. I'm going to take a little of that sky color. And just put a little bit of the sky color there. Okay, perfect time for another break. We're going to take a quick break, let this dry, and we'll come in and we'll do a little more uh, touch-ups, and we'll finish up the details of the uh, lighthouse and the boat. Okay, we took our break. I took about uh, 15 minutes, and uh, I'm just uh, cleaning up the palette here. It's good to do this, you know, uh, all th throughout your painting as you're going. If you have a larger palette or if you have a small paint box like this or a small, smaller paint box or palette, still the same principle. Keep the palette uh, wiped up and clean and uh, so that you don't keep mixing, over mixing uh, colors. That tends to make some really um, unpleasant looking uh, mixes of paint. Um, so it's good to... Uh, Keep the uh, palette uh, fresh, colors fresh, and um, we're gonna we're gonna keep going here. Now we're really getting to the point where we're we'll, we were using a uh, number ten Raphael brush. We're gonna now use back to a number six. So we're gonna use our number six Raphael brush now, and we're gonna do some of our darkest darks along the. Um, uh, the rocks along the base of the uh, lighthouse and and then finally we will use our needlepoint needlepoint brush for the uh, details of the um, uh, lighthouse at the top here at the light and the uh, conical roof and we'll do some uh, other uh, detail work some railings and roof irons here. There's an iron roof. There's some iron railings up top here. So we'll get all those final details. That's the last thing we'll do. And that's really fun too. Once you start putting in those final details, you're going to have uh, just a really beautiful, pleasing looking painting. Um, and we'll also go over how we're going to do those details. Uh, if you're brand new at watercolors, you're going to maybe have to do a little more careful um, pencil work maybe before you go in and do your details. If you've been painting a while, you're probably used to maybe putting in details at the end of the painting and it's not so much a, an issue. Here we're going to do some darks um, around the rocks. Let's get those in. So we're just going to use a simple dark mixture. French Ultramine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. I'm going to refer back to my painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to do some rock shapes, round straight and the thing is to think of the rocks here these think of these darkest darks as like highlights even though they're dark think of them as like highlights don't don't fill in everything with darks that would that wouldn't have a pleasing effect so pretend uh, the light is just bouncing around and I'm going to add a little bit of water, and the reason I'll do that is just to make a alternate, you know, another alternate mix, dark. I don't want to do everything with these three colors. I want to have an alternate mix here too. That's good to remember. Just something a little different, maybe some warmer, uh, darker tones with the yellow ochre and raw, with a raw sienna actually there. So you can make a dark mix and add in some gold or, or raw sienna or yellow ochre. And then that it gives it a little bit of an interesting uh, look. So I'll add that dark up here. We'll go back to that. 
and this slopes down toward the water like that. And then this over here is a dark and it seems to go down like this. And for whatever reason, if you want a further reference, you can always type into like YouTube um, or into Google or any kind of search engine online on the internet. And you can type in like watercolor um, rocks or watercolor seascapes. And you'll kind of see different ways artists, different artists do their rocks w with water. Um, that's also an option. Like if you're trying to work out your ideas, maybe you try this painting once or twice and then you're going to do it a third or fourth time and you start thinking, let me have some interesting rock ideas that are maybe a little different than what I'm doing here. You might want to, you can always research other artists on how they do it. You know, you, you, you sort of find your way. And then here we're just making more, I'm making some more darks. And I'll zoom in a little bit here as we're getting close. Maybe I'll zoom in now and try to... Again, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. darker there. And I just put a little bit of a darker tonal value at the top of the uh, concrete platform. It's foundation for the lighthouse. And And again, I take my brush, dry off some water after I rinse my brush. Straight into the tube. Tubes of paint, the, you know, the paint comes straight out of the tube into the palette. And then from there, straight onto the palette from the tube. That gives you your darkest darks, your richest um, tonal values and color. And I'm just going to do some we'll get a little more color and shadowing under these rocks for right now maybe just Now we can go with some green. Maybe a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. 
and then maybe just a little bit of the shadowing here under by the rocks. So I use the lighter tonal value first just to get some of that feel of shadowing there, here and there. Then I rinse the brush, dry the brush, go in and get some of the darker tonal values here, and then just charge in a few. And that's just enough to give it that look that's um, that shadow, shadowing look, the, the, the mirroring of the uh, stone, the, the rocks. Splashing here. Okay, and let's continue to a little more detail. These this distant boat here. I dry off the brush. This type of detail, when you get into details, usually a lot of times they're usually very very little water. So I dry dry off my brush with uh, the tissue, and then go in and just. Try to and I add just a little bit of that cadmium red. That little exciting cadmium red makes that look pretty interesting. It kind of draws the eye over to that boat quickly. That exciting bit of color and there's the cabin here. And then uh, we'll that's good. And And blend in a few things. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to take another break for about five or ten minutes. And then all we have left will be just to do the final um, ornaments, uh, the final really dark darks. We'll mix some more super dark color and we'll do the uh, top of the lighthouse, the light, the uh, rooftop of the light, the cone. Um, we're going to do um, this crane over here the flagpole, the uh, smokestack on the boat will do, and then we'll do this roof area here with the um, posts underneath that roof. So we'll finish up those bit of details with our uh, needlepoint brush when we come back, um, and we'll have the painting finished. Okay, we're back from our break, and we just, we're gonna just do the final uh, details here. Let's uh, mix up a little bit of a dark, we can just sort of, uh, we'll dry off our palette a little bit. We're going to go with French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. We'll make a good dark here. Okay. Then I usually uh, I keep a tissue. I just dry off the uh, brush a little bit when I load it up with paint, because we are going to. This is a smaller painting. This is like a, an eight by ten. So uh, if this was a very large painting, we would probably we wouldn't dry off the the needlepoint brush. But since we're doing a smaller uh, size painting here, we're just going to uh, check off just a little bit of the of the paint. You could also use a piece of test paper next to you, the same same type of paper, watercolor paper, and you can get you know get dry off a little bit of the paint first. We wouldn't want to start flooding the paper with uh, like a dark mix like this if we're trying to do details like this. So that's all that is really. And then you just I'm following the pencil lines, and under here is a dark.
and I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. So the details I'm going to start with are up top, on the top of the painting up here, and this way I don't lean my hand into the painting at all when I'm doing the details. So. And there's a small antenna there. And then there's There's railings up here, so. I just put some railings. And then there's a, a steel catwalk up top. And the same thing here, there's a catwalk there, a steel platform and we'll do some more railings. I do them fast and Nothing too fancy. And windows. There's just a little bit of a, a detail over the top of the windows, a little arch. And there's maybe a... And then here there's... There's a roof. Again, nothing, I'm not making it too. There's a doorway here, it's kind of dark. Looks like a large, maybe like a double door here. So. And I won't go too much, I'm not gonna, this is the crane over here. And then there's, uh, and I just try to do this very carefully. I just take my time. Maybe I do it in a couple. That looks pretty good. And I'll put a couple darks on the top of this section over here. there. And then over here there's uh, there's the boat over here. And I just couple. And we'll do our American flag. We're going to have uh, cadmium red and uh, lizard crimson. I'll dry off the just so we have a little bit of paint there. We don't want to go too much. And we'll use some blue, cobalt, French ultramarine.
and I'm just going to add a few uh, A little bit of blue, a couple little bits of uh, French ultramarine blue under the ship here, and foreshadowing just a little bit, and that and that's pr that's pretty much it. That's really the completed painting. I hope everyone enjoyed this. We'll uh, peel off the tape and just kind of see the painting uh, isolated. The uh, it'll have a nice uh, border around it, nice crisp border, and. Okay, I hope everyone tries this. Um, we did this painting uh, A to Z. We did our first uh, steps. We're just really getting a little bit of a layout around the perimeter of our painting so that we have everything sitting in our rectangle just right. And then we did our pencil drawing. We got our pencil drawing in. We um, completed that accurately. And then we went and did our, our, our washes. So we went step by step and uh, got all of our washes in just right and now we just did our final details with our darkest darks and we um, have a nice pleasing painting and uh, I hope you come back again and we're going to do uh, more paintings and uh, hope everyone is uh, having fun with their watercolors and again if you haven't subscribed please subscribe consider subscribing um, also too I have a secondary channel uh, on YouTube it's pretty much just a couple months uh, underway and that's a watercolor in five all capitals if you type that in and uh, we'll cover more interesting details on uh, watercolors there as well as um, creating paintings uh, and we'll have a fun time okay everyone have a great uh, day evening morning and we'll see you soon bye bye